Our first presenter this evening is Liz Lidget. She is, she is an art lover and has been since her first art classes at the age of five at the Des Moines Art Center. She has a master's in public art from the University of Southern California and works at the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs and sits on the boards of Art Noir of Valley Des Moines. Please welcome Liz. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so like uh, Matt said, I am here to talk about how to start an art collection as a young professional on a budget. And I, can know, I know that sounds very daunting and can seem very expensive. There's good reason. Um, this Edward, Edward Monet uh, self-portrait sold at Sotheby's last year for $35 million. Um, this Andy Warhol sold for a much more affordable $32 million and, uh, at Sotheby's. And rival auction house Christie's reported $3.2 billion dollars worth of art sales in just the first half of 2011. So it's quite the booming market and it can be quite expensive. Oh, but I'm not saying that you have to buy masterpieces just yet, especially when you can see them for free here at the Des Moines Art Center. Um, this is Edward Hopper's Automat and it is a part of the collection here and it's a world-renowned painting right here in Des Moines. So you can see that all the time. Okay. Um, but what I am saying is that I'm making a call to young professionals to stop look, looking like you live in a college dorm room. You need to take down your Justin Bieber posters because that's just embarrassing. <laughs> and, uh, and start collecting real original artwork. Okay, so my first tip is this. Find artwork that speaks to you. So come to the art center, go to galleries look through art books, and you'll start to see the artwork that really you respond to. And only then are you ready to go art hunting. This is a print that I actually own by print artist Mike Montero. My next tip is to find talent early. So this is a picture of Drake University's Anderson Gallery. You can go to local colleges and universities, and you can call their fine arts department, and then you can see if you can go to student shows or meet students at their studios. And it's really a win-win situation when you are supporting fledgling artists. This, for example, is my next tip um, to go local, and this is by local artist Van Holmgren. Um, he's also an Art Nora board member. Um, so you can go to local shows here in Des Moines at galleries. I know um, there are things at the Social Club, um, War Paint is coming up soon. You'll really be able to get some face time with these artists. The next is to use your mouse. So this is a screen capture of Etsy.com. Even when you're going online, you can search local. So as you can see here, or maybe it's a little small, um, I put Des Moines into the local search engine so I could see what type of artists, even online, that I could find here. Um, even if you go to a gallery, you can Google that artist, and here are some of the things that came up for the Des Moines artists. Um, but if you go on Google, you can go and see if there was an artist that you really liked and you saw in art, uh, an art gallery. Then you can see if there's less expensive pieces that you can find, or if you can work, at, work with the artist directly and um, kind of take the gallery out of it, which usually puts a fee in. My next is to broaden your definition of art. This is a sculpture that I actually bought here at the Des Moines Art Center. Uh, at the vault uh, party, and this is by Michael Peter Kane, who's a local Iowa artist. Um, but looking beyond just the 2D, not just a painting, and if you look and broaden your definition and looking into sculptures, or things like that quilt that your granny made you, or things like that that you really love and really mean something to you, that can work as art on your walls as well. And this is by a local artist at Charlotte's Quilted Web out of Ames. <coughs> long slide, sorry guys. <laughs> My next is to go for photography. So um, photography, a print of that can be much less expensive than a painting or a sculpture, but carries the same amount of artistic value. Um, also, it can be much less expensive become, because they come in additions. And this is by an Oregon artist or photographer. Um, my next is to go big or go home. Um, I'm not saying that you should try and buy Monet's water lilies or all three enormous panels that uh, are in the MoMA, but um, my point is that if you save your pennies, then you can really buy a large piece of artwork that can make a huge impact in your home. Um, these panels are like six and a half by 13 and a half, and they're, they're pretty enormous. Or you can forget everything I just said and buy several small pieces <laughs> and um, arrange them artfully. Again, this is um, 
from my home. This is something I've done personally. And there's that print by Mike Montero that you saw earlier. Okay, okay. <laughs> my next is to go for prints. So just like photographs, they come in editions. Um, this uh, this uh, print in particular was for the Big Hair Ball. It was a special edition by local artist, Basement Design. Um, again, this is a piece that I own. Um, but if you come in those editions, then because they make so many, um, it can't be much less expensive than just an original piece of artwork. My next is to go um, travel with art in mind. This particular piece is a juju hat out of Cameroon. It's a feathered hat that um, many artists or prominent um, members of their communities wear. But my point is that if you look for local art artisans, street artisans, then things can be much less expensive and will always remind you of your time there. This print um, is to go vintage or go for garage sales. This print is by Ansel Adams. It was found in a cardboard box um, in California a couple of years ago for $45. They later found out that it was worth $200 million. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that's gonna happen to you, but um, with my last couple of slides, I'm showing you some of my favorite artists and leaving you with a couple of tips. This is by Barnett Newman. Um, it was done in 1950 and it hangs in the MoMA. Um, once you have this artwork, please take care of it. So don't put it in anywhere that will hang directly in sunlight. Uh, don't put it by any heat sources. This is um, Cecily Brown. It's called Half Fine. It is a piece of the collection here at the Des Moines Art Center. And just like when you're at a museum, please don't touch your artwork. <laughs> Laura Palmer. <laughs> um, I know that maybe because you feel like you own it, you want to touch it all the time, but the oils on your fingers really will erode it. <laughs> and with my last slide, this is my favorite artist, Jackson Pollock. And my last thought to you is that art should be more than a uh, purchase, it should be an experience. And I hope that with these 10 tips, you will start collecting art and have your own on your own walls. So thank you. Woo! Yeah!